Hello. Hello, all of you. I'm super excited to be here today and present to you. It's my first time at Slush. And I was asked backstage, what do you find so special about Slush and what is so unique about this experience? And being here first time, I can only say, it is the compound intellect of all of the people here, the curiosity, the explorative mindset, and the energy that makes this so special. And I'm only here today, and I feel it, and I'm very grateful that after this presentation, I can go around like all of you and meet more people and get that energy. Especially in an environment where the nature is calm, the contrast seems quite big here in Vinland. So happy to be here. Any one of you also first time slusher, so to say. Yeah, cool. So you feel the same as I feel, right? Super exciting to be here. Any of you addicted to slush? Many times here. Cool, keep, go keep going strong on that one. Really, really cool. So today I'm here. Uh, I'm happy to introduce already myself. I'm the Chief People Officer at Sender. And Sender, before I go into my presentation, is a company in road logistics. And you may wonder, hey, startup, road logistics, is that exciting? Actually, it's super cool. So if you look at our vision, we're digitalizing road logistics and fast forwarding the future of road logistics. So if you just step out and go maybe on a drive, if I don't know if any of you drive a car, if you were to drive from Hamburg to Stuttgart, if you drive from Paris to Rotterdam, if you drive from Milan to Madrid, and if you do a little game, as you could do with kids, count the number of times you see the same truck, you will find that actually you don't add up to five. Even on these long distances, you only see maybe once, maybe twice the same truck. And that is because this industry is super fragmented. And that's where we play in. And we are aiming with the digital marketplace to connect the data of available loads of shippers with our carriers so that small carriers can actually drive both their way in as well as their way out with a full truck. Because it's surprising how many trucks drive empty. And we hope to contribute to that and make this, in that sense, a more efficient value chain, but also a more sustainable one. And we're doubling down now also on green transport. So it's a super exciting industry to be in. It's a super cool company to be in. But it's not the reason why I'm there. It's one of the reasons. The big reason is the culture and what the founders have built at Sender quite intentionally over time to make this very unique and special as a company and as a place to be. And in my role, of course, I meet a lot of CEOs and many founders, for sure. And everybody would say people are important. But it's only when you're in a company, when you see the initiatives that have been taken and how people are treated, that it comes to life. So today I want to talk to you about what the model is that will help you to bring it alive in your country, company. Because I must think many of you are founders, maybe first time founders, figuring out how to do this. I want to share some methods you can use, some very simple ones, maybe some structured ones. And I want to share with you something around three examples that we use at Sender that turned out to be very successful. And those maybe will help you to, to do it in your own way, in your own format, in your own company uh, as well. So engagement and performance, two very important words. Performance is about output and engagement is about the gut. There's actually, in, nobody really can find your gut, but it's your heart, is what makes you wake up in the morning, excited to say, I want to go to work. The two of them don't always go together. So if you would make a little uh, overview, if you have high performance, you can make a bar also to say, do I have high engagement? So I've made a big star here, top right. Any one of you, first time founders, you feel your top right, right? You feel you're high performing, you're super engaged, you built the company, it's your whole heart and soul is in it. And the team you get around you probably feels the same. And when you grow bigger and bigger, it is your task to maintain that same energy in the company. But it's not so easy. So what happens over time, and it could happen to yourself too as a founder, you have people that go to the right, that are super, super high performing, but they start doubting the strategy. They start questioning. They are wondering whether it's worth it because none of you probably like none of us work 40 hours. You put a lot of time in and people start questioning. 
and you don't see it on the surface because they're high performing, but internally they're disengaging. And that makes people almost quiet quitters. And it's hard to recognize those because you see it not in their performance. Then there's another group of people that goes down. And these are the people that over time still put the same energy in, put the same dedication in, but their performance is not up to the expectation. The company grows bigger, new people come in, they set different performance standards. You'll find that these people are very, very kind people that are glue in your company, but they may not be the ones that come in the role they were in till date to the success that they could have in their output. So this is not new, it's not a super difficult model. I don't like difficult models because I can simply not remember very difficult models and probably it's the same for you too. My goal of today is to tell you this model and what is most important is to reflect on the model. So to reflect yourself, where am I on this grid? Am I switching off a little bit? Do I think it's too much? Am I still on the right top? And also, if you're dropping in terms of the standards that are out there, constantly have that reflection for yourself. So my key message for today is, in order to make your organization all stars, this needs deliberate reflection of every individual and of every uh, team and as a company as a whole. And there's mechanisms for that, to have reflection. And I call it the reflection discipline. And discipline may not be a word you like, because it comes with a lot of rigor, it comes with a lot of strength, and, and actually constantly, even if it's not necessarily what you want to do that day, still do it, reflection discipline. So in a company, it requires that you're actually looking into how are the performance going, how is engagement going, and to stimulate an organization that has this habit in their own teams. And if you're a founder today, you're probably most founders are not alone. Probably you're with two. Often they say three is the magic number. I worked at a company where there were four founders, also super cool. There I saw this happening all the time. And speaking to founders, I see this happening a lot. Conversations with each other every Tuesday morning breakfast, every Wednesday evening, talking honestly about how you're doing, how is the business going, what is working in terms of the heart of the people, what's working in the output. But that same methodology somehow never scales to the organization as a whole and to all teams. And that means that if we are not putting a systematic approach in place at the micro level, at the macro level, if we're not making the way to reflect symbolic to the personality of the company you want to be, then actually you're not set up for success. So why reflection? Um, I'm proud to say I'm from one of the technical universities that is also uh, present here in the, from the Netherlands. Reflection has to do with the fact that if what you do as a founder, what you do as a leadership, if you would look at the company as a mirror, the science shows, it's a very easy picture, that if you cast things and you do things in a way to uh, mirror that's clean, that's unbroken, you get back exactly what you intended to do. But then in real life, you know your organization does not look like a flawless mirror, right? There's a lot of different people, there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of different backgrounds and diverse views on things. So you cast things, you take initiatives, but it comes back maybe in a much more diffused way. And until you have reflection mechanisms, you will not know. So I will talk you through now four ways to do those reflections, and then three initiatives at Sender that turned out to be super successful. So what are these reflection habits? On the very left side, this is so easy, and it's probably not mind-blowing, but life can sometimes be very simple and effective. It is called daily habits in meetings. It's super, super helpful if you want to create a culture of openness and where you can reflect also amongst each other and be vulnerable. If you you close a meeting and you take four minutes and you go around and everybody speaks up to say what did they like about the meeting and make it personal. So, hey, Anton, I really like how you prepared this document. Hey, Charlie, this was really fantastic. You kept us on time or you challenged us, but also critical to say, hey, you were not in the meeting. You were on your phone all the time. And the rule is you need to be crisp. So it needs to take max four minutes. 
you can say positive things and repeat them, but the constructive feedback you only say once. So that is a really simple thing. You can do it. It's very quick and it's very disarming for people to speak up and to be recognized, but also to speak up and be aware of what other people are doing and create a culture of feedback <coughs> and reflection. The second thing you can do is, again, it's not rocket science, but it's retro. When you finish off a project, have the team together to just look back, make it 20 minutes only, super sharp, super simple, look at the results that you achieved versus your plan, but more importantly, reflect on how is the performance of everyone individually in the team, how are they engaged in the project, what would they do differently if they were again here, and that even put it on little post-its in your digital board, is super insightful. It's insightful to learn, but more importantly, it really, really helps to create this culture in which people reflect. So you see the intentions of what your light that you were casting as a project leader or as a project member is actually coming back the way you intended. And that's really important. Now, some of you may have already grown your company much bigger, and you may be with 100 people, you may be with 150 people, 400,000 people. And then these methodologies you need to also structure more in a formal process. And this is at the end, the right box in structure. We call it performance management. I don't necessarily like the word because it's as if we can manage performance of people. I tend to believe it's people who drive and lead their own performance. But at most companies, this does help. So at Sender, we have a performance management system that every six months, and a digital platform opens up to people and ask a person, how was my impact this six months? What did I achieve? What worked well for me? What did I not achieve? Because it's perfectly fine to also admit that things didn't come through. If you're in startup world, actually most of your project may not come through because you set such bold ambitions. You also look at behavior. So we ask people, what have you contributed to the culture of Send? And we go through our values, and people can enter there what they like. And then finally, what have you learned? And what was your commitment to yourself to grow and develop yourself as a professional in our company? And these questions on the what, the how, and the growth you made, a person answers, but also peers answers. And peers are your colleagues, so people select five people that they want their feedback from, and they give the same answers to their manager. So as a manager, you get the same feedback, and then as a manager, the circle is round, and they call it 360. This process is super time consuming. So it's always a process that it's challenge. Is it worth it? But I believe it's super important. It gives this reflection discipline every six months to review and to accomplish what you've accomplished and how you've contributed to the company and to your own commitments. At Sender, we had last round, no, this is 2023, 20, over 4,700, I think 36 reviews. So can you imagine how much value there is for people to learn and to give feedback to each other and to grow? I think it's unprecedented to have that level of depth in your reflection. So this is what we do. Uh, there's many ways to do that. There's a lot of opinions to do this. Uh, if there's any HR professionals in this crowd, this is the hottest topic uh, within the HR function. But I do recommend however you would define it, however way you do it, when you grow bigger, it helps you to build that rhythm of reflection. So finally, these three things I just shared were reflections for performance. There's also reflection on engagement. So I show you now a chart. This is our engagement reflection. At Sender, we measure every month how are we doing on the engagement level of people. Are people happy to work with us? Are they still belonging at us? Do they feel their opinions are heard? Do they understand the strategy? Are they committed to the strategy? Do they see how they contribute? So we have a lot of questions. Probably if you would ask yourself how many questions do I want to ask, you may end up with 80 or 100 questions. That's of course not possible. So we have a tool that we have around 50, 55 questions and they rotate over time. So people answer every month and we get this feedback every month. It's super cool because this is exactly the mirror that shows us the light that we're casting with all of the projects, all of the communications, our all hands, our roadshows. 
do we get back the same light or does it dispert and go in many different directions? So we have this tool and the honest truth is some initiatives that we put a lot of effort in don't work and you will find some things don't work and you don't see it go up or you don't see underlying drivers go up, but some things do work. And then you see the proof in the, in the metrics and that's super, super valuable. So let me show you three things that work at Sender and I'm proud of those. Um, many of those were there before I joined, so it's part of the company DNA and how the company has been built. And I want to share with you the first initiative, which we call Summer Camp. Let me see. I hope it will play a video, but I don't know which button to push to make that happen. Let me see. Let me talk you through it, because I don't think the video shows. If the video would show, you would actually feel the energy. And I, and I try to bring that energy of 1,000 people into me and then cast it to you. But at Summer Camp, we bring together all of the people at Sender. And last September, we brought them to Italy. And in those days, there were three days, formal days. One first day was about reflection the momentum, what have we achieved, what are we proud of, what can we accelerate. So a lot around positive momentum based on facts and numbers of what the team has done over the year. And the second day was all about inspiration. So what does the logistics industry evolve? How will green transport evolve? How can you evolve your career? So a lot of different uh, elements to have a much more further looking out, uh, outlook. So those two things, looking back, reflection, having the momentum and looking forward were very important parts of how we designed that summer camp. Then the final part was all around personal connections. And this is really important in our culture. So it was around the fun we had together. It was about connecting, team building. And the way the program was designed, I think was very, very beautiful. And we saw also an immediate uptick in the engagement coming from that. Now, would that work for you? I don't know. It has worked for Sender for a long time, even I think eight years ago when the company was quite small and starting. These things were organized, but it's over time evolved and became very intentional about what is the outcome and how do we orchestrate um, the days to make people feel this connection with the company and feel engaged for giving it their extra best. So that is one. The second one, this is a picture we call it Senna. We do love branding, by the way, uh, as part of uh, our culture. Our, everything is orange. Um, coming from the Netherlands, I love that color. But it's very recognizable in all of our offices. We call it Senup. Senup is a program in every year. We select 15, 20 top performers, people that have a true potential, that have been outstanding in the way they were entrepreneurial in their domain, the way they added value to their teams, and the way they stood out as an individual, and we bring them together for a year. So in that year, they meet up a couple of times. They are part of executive team sessions. They get a mentor through our networks that they can work on their personal development. They get personality tests so they can also reflect on where they are as a person and how they want to grow. And then finally, we assign them a project and as teams, they work on business relevant projects. And now this really gets excited because it's not a potential program that runs next to the business, actually fully integrated in the business. They work on these projects for six months and then at summer camp, they present their projects back to the whole of the management and they formally graduate. So there's some symbolism, rituals around that. And then the new crew, the new squad will start. So this program, I would say, is difficult to set up, but if you put your, your head into it, you can set it up without spending a lot of money. It's really important to do, and as small as you may are today, to pull out and have this CEO founder-led program is amazing to retain your top performers. It really creates this energy and people uh, are competing to be part of that now. Today, I think from Sender, we're 1,000 people, 205 people in our company 
are under the leadership of someone that comes from this squad. And that makes me really proud, because that shows our internal mobility and how we grow people. And that, next to hiring people, is probably the most important thing you have to do as a founder. So that is our setup program. And the last example I want to share is something also quite cost effective and easy to implement. And that is the Send a Learning Week. So what we do every year in June, we ask all of our people, what is it that you are passionate about? What is it that you really, really know well? And what would you like to share from your knowledge, your expertise with all of your colleagues? And it's amazing to see what comes out. So people surprise you, right? People come up with things in their personal life, things they know business-wise. And we have a variety of topics. People want to share finance for finance fundamentals, they want to share team building, they want to share maybe yoga or meditation, they want to share how to deal with stress or how to cope with uncertainties, they want to share AI, they want to share what their work is uh, on a daily basis. So a lot of proposals already we can see coming from, uh, from our people, submitting their personal ideas of what they want to share with their colleagues. We then vote. So the whole company can vote what they like best, and then we make a week, and in that week, the most voted topics are there, and they're presented by the people for their own colleagues, and it's super high energy. It's super rewarding to see your colleagues presenting topics you were not aware of that they had this knowledge, and it generates a lot of sharing of knowledge across the group. So these are three examples, the summer camp, the SANAP potential group, as well as the learning week. Examples that you can shape, you can take to your own company if it's valuable to you. But what I really appreciated that send is that these were put in place quite early on, in the early days, because it set the tone and it also now gives us a rhythm, a rhythm of reflection, a rhythm of investing and engagement of people. So that is my final <coughs> slide. That is because however you look at your goal, and I know you all have amazing goals. If I read the visions of founders, they're awesome. But it's actually your ability to have your company, your team, your founding team, your management team, the whole teams, create a habit of reflection. And why this is important, I hope I shared with you, but I, I tend to believe it's actually the same in, in many other areas, right? Every person that's on the Olympics, that's on the front line, the start line to go run the 100 meters, every one of them has the same goal to get the gold medal, right? Every person that is in American football, and I'm a big American football lover, so raise your hands if I'm not the only one, maybe some, yeah, thank you. Every year, every season, when they start the season and they run their first yard, they have this goal to get the Super Bowl. But thinking about the goal, working against your goal, all the rational things you need to do will not get you there. It will only bring you there if you have this constant habit of reflection, improving, improving, improving. And it's very, very interesting to see how that engages people, because it's one of our almost childish behavior, how do you call it, childish values we have as an individual, to do better every time, right? To do better every time. So if you are, a young person and you draw your first drawing of a little house, you want to make a next drawing a little bit better, right? This is what we love to do. We love to get better every time. And we don't lose that when we get older. We don't lose that when we become professionals. We don't lose that when we are leaders. Doing better every day, having this reflection habit, is just the most inspirational thing and, and forceful thing you can have from inside, self-motivating. Well, in the NFL, there's one really great example of that. It's uh, Jason and Travis Kelsey. Uh, they're both big brothers, and I mean really, really big. One is, I think, 191 and the other one 93. Uh, their weight uh, is around 115, 130 kilos. They both won the Super Bowl, two brothers, both won the Super Bowl. Really impressive. One with the Chiefs, one with, um, with the Eagles. And they ended up in the Super Bowl competition one day against each other, Eagles uh, versus the Chiefs. 
If you watch any videos of them, if you ever have to or want to see a podcast, watch their podcast, they, these brothers love each other, but they really, really have done this reflection habit from early days on. So they did not get to the Super Bowl because they had this goal. They got to the Super Bowl because when they were still tiny, they didn't have the big beards, they didn't have the big body. They were already constantly challenging each other, throwing the ball, catching the ball, throwing the ball, catching the ball. And that is, I think, the most important thing to develop and grow in your company. As a founder, as you do with your founding team, invest that time and create that culture with your teams. Thank you very much. This is uh, what I wanted to share with you today.